Welcome back to Call What You Want. I'm Jimmy alongside Chuck and Jesse, and we're getting after it, like always. And now we're talking a little Americans abroad. Who stood out for us this particular weekend? Before we get there, though, let me uh, mention some notable results. First, Josh Sargent scores. Once again, it gets man of the match in Norwich's 2-1 win over Coventry. He played the full 90. Congratulations to him. Uh, and then Gio Reyna makes his first Premier League appearance for Nottingham Forest. That was pretty sweet. Uh, I actually can't wait to get into that. Hopefully you guys picked him as one of your standouts because I did not. Luca De La Torre grabs another goal. Look at this guy. And an assist in the man of the match performance against Osasuna. Way to go, LDLT. Weston McKinney, Team Aware, involved in Juve's 1-0 defeat. In the Derby de Italia, they ended up losing, uh, as I just mentioned. Taylor Booth scores a hat trick as Utrecht beat Volendam 4 to 2. His younger brother, Zach, opened the scoring in the game for Volendam. And uh, that's pretty rad to have brothers scoring that's awesome. in one that's awesome. game. So, Jesse, I'm coming to you. Who's, who's your, who really stood out for you? this weekend and why. well I, just, I want to reference taylor booth really quick because i saw him a lot when he was with Bayern too uh he would sometimes come and, and play against either leafering or we would have a in the fifa break we'd have a, a match uh, against him with salzburg and i'm glad to see his career taking off and, and him doing well and i think he's got big potential and he's a really good kid um you know so i'm happy to see him doing well and that's pretty cool that you're playing against your brother and you both score in the match that's pretty special so um, but I, I, I watched, you know, here in Italy, the big match of the week, no doubt, was Juve at Inter. Um, and, you know, typical Italian style, um, you know, Italy or Inter really on the front foot um, and pushing the game hard uh, until they got the lead and then protecting the lead and playing a little more defensive and, and locking things down. And it winds up being a one nil victory. Uh, Tim Wade helped a lot when he came on the pitch. He was energetic. He, he was going at guys 1v1. He was involved in the attack. A little bit unlucky not to get a little bit more out of it. And I thought overall, Weston had a good match. And, and sometimes I, knowing Weston a little bit, I know that, you know, the way that, that Juventus play, it kind of, they, they want to make sure that they are always protecting their goal and not giving much away, and they're good defensively. But knowing Weston's personality, I know he wants to get out on the run a little bit more. I know he wants to use a, his aggressiveness a little bit more. Um, but I thought he was good in the match. In, in transition, he was their most dangerous player. Uh, he set up a play where uh, Vlahovic should have scored um, in the first half, and that would have given him a 1-0 lead. And I think then the game could have looked a little bit differently. But... You know, um, I think even reading some of the articles here about Weston is there's a big appreciation for the way he's playing this year. I think they're talking about his fitness level. They're talking about his productivity around uh, the box and, and helping set up more attacking plays. And then also his responsibility and intelligence to do to help out the team defensively. And you should I mean, it's crazy when you watch him in the match. He's in he's in the defensive box. The next moment he's in the offensive box. He's chasing. He's running. He's winning duels. He's taking throw ins. He's winning duels on, on on corner kicks and free kicks. And so, you know, he's playing a big part in the success of, of Juve this year. And it's it's great to see him playing at such a high level. So, Chuck, let's roll right into who's your pick for the week, weekend. Well, we touched on it a little bit to start the show. It's Gio Reyna making his debut in the English Premier League. Um, how often is it, are we talking about his health and his 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 participation with Dortmund? And he, So he makes the move, comes to, to the Premier League, to a team that I don't know if we all, probably not too many of us, thought it'd be the right fit for his skill set at the moment. You, you, but he's in search of playing time, and he got 12 minutes coming off the bench. And 21 touches, 11 for 11 in, in passing in the final uh, attacking third, 17 for 19 passing uh, there, 11 carries. I, I think... It was a it was a decent strong showing from from Giorena to to kind of get his feet wet uh, in the English Premier League. He came on for Ilanga, who is more of a more direct runner, more of a more pace to him. So, I think fortunately for Giorena, Bournemouth ends up getting a red card. So Billing uh, tackles uh, Hudson Odoi from behind, uh, stamps on him. He was just trying to get a yellow, but the way he did it, instead of kicking his feet, he stomps on on the heel, and you're you're gonna get the red there. So the game opened up for Gio. So you're able to to have a little bit more time on the ball because obviously Bournemouth had to sit and and try and protect uh, the point. So um, 
not not too bad of a game to come into. Uh, but yeah, you, you obviously you want to see more, more playing time, more involvement. But um, a, a decent first showing uh, from from Gio Reyna. Yeah, very well said. And uh, I'm now going to go to my pick, Taylor Booth. And Jesse mentioned him earlier. He had a hat trick, his first ever hat trick for Utrecht in the air to BC. Three goals and their 4-2 win over Volendam. He had six shots overall, and uh, he was doing on the other side of the ball, too. A couple tackles to really put his imprint uh, on the game. His first league goal since November 12th of 2022. That was uh, a little while ago, but it's also cool to see his brother score. Pretty nifty goal as well. Nice quick turn and uh, hitting that. So the Booth brothers clearly demonstrating their talents. And I know that you had mentioned you had been around him before, Jesse. And so I actually wouldn't mind hearing how you think – his floor, let me say what his player profile is and where you think he could maybe fit into the national team picture moving forward. He's a, he's a crafty, quick, clever, uh, pretty, pretty fast. Um, and, and a technically gifted player that sees final plays. So, you know, when we played Bayern a couple times, Bayern two, a couple times they played like a four, one, four, one, and they used him as an inverted winger. Um, but he can play on both sides. And I think even in the match, they, they slipped them kind of into one of the central 10 positions as well. So he has a lot of flexibility to play in these, these, uh, attacking midfielder roles. And he likes to come inside and, and then find ways to make last, last uh last plays and then he's really good at hooking balls um into the corner so uh, you know he's a good finisher he's an active player he's a confident guy he's good on the ball yeah i think um and again you know when you send players to to holland i always think that's a good opportunity for them to get playing time to show their quality to to fit within a a system that appreciates developing young players. So I I expect Taylor to, to continue to get better and better. And again, like I said, I didn't mean to steal your thunder, Jimmy, by, (laughs) but he's just, he's a, you know what? He's a good kid. And, and one of the things that, you know, it's not like when I've been in Europe and, and I've run into a lot of these players at different places and just kind of said hello and keep going. And, you know, actually, actually now that I think about that, I, I, I had met Gio once on the pitch after a match um, when Leipzig played Dortmund. Um, you know, but you just try to, as, as being a little bit older person I, and, and still knowing what a challenge it is for me and my family to come to Europe and how lonely it can feel sometimes, I just tried to always be positive with those young players and say, listen, we're all proud of you. We're all watching you keep going. Like it's really difficult here. You feel alone, but the, but the rewards will be massive for you, not just in your professional life and in your football life, but personally you learn languages, you learn new cultures, you have new experiences. There are things they can take with them for their entire lives. So Taylor was one of those guys where, you know, every time I saw him, you know, it's not so easy. The team's warming up and all the German guys are kind of hanging out and, and his German was good, but like, you know, it's always a little bit of a challenge to, to fit into the group, to be accepted, to, to feel like you're, you're, you're one with everyone. So, and sometimes like Taylor at the time might've been 17. So sometimes these guys come over, Charlie, uh, you came over when you were young, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy. You, you so told you, me before the show though, you were going to steal a thunder and talk about booth before. <laughs> yeah, correct. I, I, that's, it's one of the reasons why I'm so happy with when, when I see these guys do well, you know, because I know the sacrifices and I know the challenges, right. That they, that they go through. And so when you see them doing well, it's just, it's really good to see. And do you, do you really know, happy. Jesse, do you know how he got to Bayern first and then, and then made I, the move? Because I always find it interesting when these young Americans get to these European clubs before they're 18 and, you know, they're involved in the Academy before they get to the reserves. And so do you see a difference with some of these Americans? Like, did Taylor Booth stand out to you in terms of his his brain, his football brain versus, you know, uh, I'd say most American kids when they go over, it's it's their athleticism, how yeah. quick they are, their reactions maybe. So correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that Taylor and Chris Richards went over because Dallas had a, a relationship with Bayern Munich. Is that is that correct? I believe that's correct. Okay. And then – Germans in general, they like the young Americans. And it's it's because 
they say that the Americans, they have this can-do attitude and they'll train hard, they'll work hard. If you criticize them, they'll come back the next day and give even more. And this like relentless mentality and the pursuit to be the best they can be, they think that they think that's a very American quality, which I, I, I think it is, but we don't even think of it like that. Like this is what it is for us, right? Is like no one can the more someone says you can't, the more you're gonna show everybody you 100%. can't. Right. And so and we're we, we've learned to take criticism. Maybe it's some of the coaches we had or just the, the realities of the world that we live in. So um, I do. And then, you know, I think that they also see that players are intelligent and that they can learn tactical systems and and that they can adapt pretty well to to what the culture is like. So, you know, I think that for, for the most part, a lot of the young Americans have have done well for, and listen, you can go back to John Harks. You can go back to Claudio Reyna. You can go back generations where these guys came over and they had to fight their way and, and then prove their quality and show what they're worth. And I think that over time that, that, that personality trait that I think Americans have that almost arrogance that like the, the, this, this desire to be the best and to show everybody that they can do it. Um, I think that that does separate us from a lot of different kind of cultures in the world and it helps us be successful. Yeah. So Taylor Booth actually came out of the RSL Academy okay, Chris that's Richards, right. and then that's right. subsequently that's right. Justin Che came out of FC Dallas. But yes, so, to your point, yeah. ultimately, yeah. Uh, they like young Americans and uh, long may that continue because they've been given a lot of good opportunities to some of our players. However, when you speak about Taylor Booth and all these players, Jesse, I, I kind of just sit here thinking, man, I wish Jesse was my dad. That would be awesome to have Jesse as my dad. He'd be a great well, dad. Well, I didn't listen. I didn't want to say that. I didn't want to say that I've become a father figure, but it's kind of the way it goes, you know? I mean, I had kids when I when I met Taylor, I think my daughter was about the same age as him, right? And so, of course, then, you know, the conversations I'm having at home with my daughter about how this is rewarding and I know it's not easy, like you're having some of the same conversations with these players and you and have yeah. to be 150 to be Jimmy's dad though. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway i mean listen yeah it's sad it's a sad statement on, on where i am in my life i guess but yeah ah, it's all good it's all good all right we got some big fixtures coming up this week we talked about the past let's talk about the future wednesday nottingham forest is hosting bristol city in the fa cup then saturday we've got union berlin taking on wolfsburg so potentially brendan aronson versus kevin paredes who's getting a lot more minutes for wolfsburg sunday volendam is taking on psv and then Sunday, AC Milan versus Napoli. That's fantastic. That was on Paramount Plus. And then Nice versus Monaco is happening on Sunday as well, 2.45 p.m. Eastern.